Was Ethelstan, the first king of the English from 927 to 939 AD, gay? In the new Last Kingdom film on Netflix, Seven Kings Must Die, King Ethelstan uh, is depicted as being in a gay relationship with one of his advisors. But is there any historical basis to this, or is it just woke nonsense that has been inserted into this film? To be clear, I don't have any issue with any historical figures being gay, um, or anyone at all, I really couldn't care less. The only issue I do have is when woke politics are inserted into films, TV series, uh, for no reason. Especially when they're historically grounded TV series, films, in general. So in this instance, there's no historical basis that King Ethelstan um, was gay as such, although it's not quite so straightforward as is usually the case. Ethelstan is known um, to not have been married and not to have had children, um, leading to many speculations about what, what the reasons are for this. In a 2020 interview, Bernard Cornwell, who's the, who's the author of a series of books The Last Kingdom is based on, called The Saxon Stories, um, details why he decided in his books to make Ethelstan a gay character. History records that he never married, which is unusual in a king because of the desire to leave an heir, and also that he liked to decorate his hair with golden ringlets, and on that small evidence, I decided that he might have been gay. It's a choice that hasn't pleased all my readers, but I was happy with it. So the decision to make King Ethelstan a gay character um, isn't completely unfounded, although it is unknown um, as to the precise history around us and the documentation um, isn't completely clear from that time. Obviously there could have been many other reasons outside of simply being gay as to why he wasn't married and didn't have any children. He could have been infertile for instance, um, or various other reasons of that nature. But what's your thoughts? Please let me know in the comments below. Ethelstan himself is considered to be the first king of England by many historians, um, but it should be made clear that numerous um, previous generations, including Alfred the Great, and previous subsequent generations were instrumental in the idea of England and the creation of England itself. King Ethelstan won numerous battles in the unification of England including against the Viking Kingdom centred on York, known as Scandinavian York, or the Kingdom of Jorvik. After King Ethelstan's death in 939, the Vikings retook York, um, and it wasn't reconquered by the English, by the Anglo-Saxons, until 954 AD. This speaks to the back and forth nature of the unification of England. Ethelstan's most famous victory was at the Battle of Brunanburh in 937 AD, which is the final battle in the Last Kingdom film itself. Ethelstan, the King of England, fought against an alliance led by Olaf, the King of Dublin, Constantine II, King of Scotland, and Owen, King of Strathclyde. With Ethelstan emerging victorious in a battle that many say was fundamental for English nationalism um, in England uh, as a state, as a nation state that it later evolved into. As for the film itself, The Last Kingdom, Seven Kings Must Die, um, recently uploaded to Netflix. As for a very quick review of the film, um, basically it's a decent watch and it's a decent way to, to wrap up The Last Kingdom series in general um, as I presume this will be the final instalment. Um, they've done five Five, five series and then the film I believe um, which obviously is a significant kind of chunk so um, Last Kingdom TV series in general I really enjoyed um, I would highly recommend it if you haven't seen it before particularly the first couple of series the Last Kingdom TV series in general um, is well worth a watch I would say if you haven't seen it already um, centred around Uhtred um, a semi um, mythical slash historical figure um, based on a somewhat historical figure but then lots have been been added to it um, but his character is fascinating uh, and it's a really interesting interesting way to explore the dynamics of, of the kind of Saxons uh, against the pagans, um, you know, the Christian Anglo-Saxons uh, against the pagan Vikings and the invasions in the Danelaw period and um, the Viking presence in England um, at a time when Alfred the Great w w had the vision of England um, as a nation um, and yet Uhtred is a kind of central character that's, that's kind of divided between the two worlds. Um, so it's really fascinating from that perspective, um, really a good way to explore that dynamic in England at that point. Um, and yeah, th this latest film 
is a good way to kind of round off the series um, in general and it's a relatively well made film. The standout for me in relation to the TV series and the film um, is Uhtred, the actor that plays Uhtred, um, Alexander Draymond I think it is, um, who, who I think is brilliant in that in that role. Um, the supporting cast as well do a very good job. Um, Mark Rowley, um, who's actually, I think he was born in Paisley in Scotland, who plays Finnan. Um, one of the, the kind of, you know, side men of Uhtred. Um, he, he's one of my favourite supporting characters. In the spirit of Deadpool, I would give it three avocados out of five. Um, it's not the best film you ever see, um, but it's definitely worth a watch. Um, and hopefully we've kind of explored a wee bit of the history behind it. Um, and it's loosely based the, the historical themes at uh, major, um, you know, points in the film are, are relatively accurate. Obviously, they, they play quite well on the, the Olaf you know, his alliance or basically try to unify um, some of the kings of Scotland, some of the kings of the Isles, um, Constantine II, I think it is in this film, um, and various other elements, um, to rebel against the Anglo-Saxons. Obviously, the last one of the last scenes in the film, um, or the last battle scene of the, of the film anyway, is the Battle of Brennenburg, um, which is a real battle, obviously, and that's a defining moment. So the historical basis of the film is relatively true. But enough about my thoughts, more importantly, what are your thoughts? Have you seen the film? If so, please let me know in the, in the comments below. And what did you make of the historical accuracy of the film? But have you ever wondered what would have happened if the Anglo-Saxons hadn't have invaded or migrated into England? To find out, please click here. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and hit the bell and tell your friends and family about this channel. For ways to support this channel, all the links will be in the description below and Patreon, buymeacoffee.com and PayPal. Thanks for all your support, but thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.